Are we gonna go to the park? Yeah. yeah? Not if it's raining. Hey Maggie, baby. Ready, Zara? I got another 60 minute on the bike this afternoon, but I had to cut that one short annoyingly actually, especially kind of the first, first session in, you know, you just kind of want to get the thing done, at least what you kind of set out to do, but otherwise I had to cut, had to cut my cross trainer by 15 minutes and a 1.5k swim turned into 500 meters, I just got to get onto the calls. Uh, we've had a few, a few people struggling at the moment. Uh, weight loss is hard, you know, improving your health and improving your performance is not always easy. So, my job is to support these people. And that's what I'm about to do. Time. This is my first management gig that I ever had years ago. And one of my first things was that I had to sit in this meeting with a group fitness instructor who, who was too thin, right? Okay, who, was, who obviously was you know, too thin to be classified as what the, you know, what the club manager had deemed unhealthy or at least what fitness deemed unhealthy uh, to teach classes because they were too thin and it was presenting a, a problem in front of instructing members, as you can imagine, right? Okay. Now, you know, which I only think about this now, like put that on the other shoe and, and say the same thing to someone who's 10, 10 kilos overweight, which we don't, we don't do that. None of us do that. We don't question someone being overweight or we don't, we don't make remarks, you know, when you're at a dinner and kind of going, you know, if you say no to a piece of food and you go, no, 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 like I'm trying to look after myself, you know, people kind of heckle and do all those sorts of things. But if someone says yes to another beer or says yes to another bit of food that they probably shouldn't be eating, that they've already had too much, we don't sit there and go, hey, should you be eating that? You're awfully looking very, you're looking very chubby, <laughs> right? We don't, we don't say that. And it's, Again, going back to that like conversation with a like with an instructor that we that we had to sit down and have like that obviously that was very awkward. But now that I look back, it's like I wish the conversation actually was done to me because I was I was unhealthy, but I was just overweight unhealthy, not too skinny unhealthy. It was it was uh, yeah, it's crazy just the way that we uh, like what we deem healthy, right? All right, the bike is done. I've done 45 minutes LAHR. Now I'm out the door for about a five kilometer LAHR run. Let's do it. Okay, so that is my first little brick session since getting back into a bit more triathlon specific training. It's been a few years since I've uh, done a real good brick session anyway. So bike, run, LEHR, and now I just finished with a bit of a cool down.
you feel good? Yes, thank you. <laughs>Saturday so I'm just out of the Great North Walk at the moment from the entrance at Cherry Book uh, Nicole's parents are moving from their home that they've been in for 37 years uh, and they move on Monday so uh, Nicole is just getting the last few things at home and kind of saying goodbye it's a bit of a, I would imagine it would be very very emotional living in a home for that long and that many memories but I guess family and memories are where the family are right like where the people are so new memories will be made even just a different location so I am like I said out here Great North Walk at the moment just going up the hill so I thought it might be a great idea to let you guys know what I'm up to today Saturday I am gonna do two two hours two hours 20 somewhere around there that's how much I have how much time I have to get home to Nicole otherwise I don't know what sort of distance is gonna be I haven't re ran along this uh, this track for ages lovely track absolutely gorgeous so if you haven't been out to the Great North Walk get out here watching this you're probably either in your endurance training uh, or you're either losing weight or you want to lose weight and that's why you're watching on now what I wanted to make a statement or just a quick kind of comment about is this this idea around group training um, can I get you to imagine yourself right now you head out for a run with the group okay that might be just two or three of you um, or you know potentially even bigger is you know, these group runs are fantastic. Like they're so much fun, they bring community and they do all these amazing things for the social side of it. But if you're the underdog, okay? Like if you're the person who's towards the back end of the pack, you may want to rethink your strategy about what you're actually getting out of that group run or at least doing it chronically. So I'm not saying get rid of it altogether, but you know, if you're doing it every single week or you're training with people all the time, and you're just slightly behind the people that you're training with. Like, the typical thought is like, oh, I'm the underdog, so I've got the most to gain. But realistically, you're just going to continually over, over train or overreach into a point where it's the wrong hormetic zone. And I always talk about the training in the right, uh, with the right hormesis effect, okay? So training is a negative. It's making sure that you try and train at the right intensity at the right time with your timeline. And that these group runs, they throw, they throw that out. They really do. So the traditional, like I said, the traditional kind of thought pattern is, oh, I'm at the underdog, I'm the one at the pack, so I'm gonna have the most improvements, you know, at the end of the at the end of the eight weeks or 12 week block or whatever it may be. But realistically, you end up just burning out. And the people that are at the front, they're in their aerobic zone because they get to jog slightly easier because the, the pack is obviously behind them, or they get potential a stack of breaks. So if you are training in a group or you're training with maybe just one other person and that person is significantly fitter than you and it's always kind of making you 
push to that point or push just that little bit harder, you're not actually doing yourself any favors by training with that person. You're, you're making their training way better because they're staying within that easy aerobic because they keep waiting for you. But just you just keep getting kind of pulled towards that person. You think that it's gonna do you a good thing because you can feel it working. But just because you can feel a workout working, just because it feels hard, doesn't mean shit to your adaptations, to your timeline, to your actual goals. Have a think about that when you train with someone next time. Are you training so that you can get results or are you training so that you can just try and keep up with someone else? Hey, I don't know about you, but I haven't got enough time to be worried about someone else. <laughs> You can do group stuff, right? You can do, and you can train with a partner and you can train with other people, but being disciplined with knowing where you're actually at physically and not necessarily always pushing past just that slightly too intense, you've got to have some sort of control. You've got to be able to know where you're at. So if that's heart rate, look, perceived effort is pretty hard to go by when you're with other people. So you'll need a metric. You'll need something like a heart rate monitor to make sure you know where you're at. So that brings me to another end, another weekly vlog. Hoping you guys enjoyed this one. Please make sure, guys, if you like the videos, hit subscribe, give me a bit of a like, give me a bit of a comment. What did you get up to this week? What sort of training are you doing currently? And what are you leading up for? So in three weeks, I'm heading out for a 600 kilometer cycle, cycling tour with a few clients. Um, out at Orange, so we could probably what, call it Tour de Orange of some kind. Anyway, it's going to be about 200 kilometers a day, three days back to back. So I probably should be running. I probably should be on the bike to be honest. But anyway, it's too much of a beautiful rainy day to stay inside on the bike or slip around on the road. Anyway, guys, I'll catch you next week. Yeah. <laughs>